one bit that I was going to ask you about that I, I, I thought maybe I disagreed with was you talk like the title of the book is Think Big. Yeah. And the vibe I got from the chapter around goals is that you're keen on people setting or uh, perhaps not, but like one camp of people in the sphere is encouraging people to set these big, hairy, audacious goals and then figuring out the small steps taken you can you can take to get there. But then there's another camp, and this is sort of where, where, where I think I am, whereby I think, in a way, I feel maybe setting goals is a bit overrated. Because if you're setting a goal, then you're essentially, to me, that feels like a contract to be unhappy until you hit the goal. And then you hit the goal, and then you have this like fleeting sense of like, oh, I hit a million subscribers. Cool. Yeah. You know, my day to day hasn't really changed, et cetera, et cetera. So the way I kind of think about goals is I try, I try and throw goals out of the window and instead just focus on those, like, what do I actually want to do? But I don't know if I'm just like BSing myself and like... <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like, I mean, you're doing okay. So it, 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 that seems to be working for you. I mean, I think it's... So, so for people who read the book, the goal is really there to serve two purposes. Yeah. So one, so that you start investing in your career. So it helps to find the tasks this week. Mm. And two, so that you actually bring your future self forward. So you're not always investing in activities that just serve you in the present day. But in the book, I do talk about the idea that every um, Sunday, so every kind of, well, I, I pick Sunday because it's the start of my week, that you reflect on how the week previous went and you look to see whether or not there are new opportunities that you should be pivoting your goal for. So I see the Think Big part of the book as really giving people a direction so they can set off on a journey yep. and they start walking yep. and more interesting things might actually come along but they make a conscious decision to, to follow those interesting things. So then they go off on a, a slightly different journey. So if you take your own career, for example, it was probably a great idea that you studied medicine in Cambridge, right? And now you have an entirely different career, yep. but you are using some of the skills that you actually learned in the university. So in that particular case, you would have sat back and said, actually, do I really want to pivot and do a large pivot? And the answer would have been yes. But had you never gone into med med uh, medical school, maybe you would never have started walking in this direction and come to the destination. So it's really about movement. Oh, OK. That's really interesting. Um, I was having these thoughts. Uh, it was it was a few weeks ago and I was on a date <laughs> and we went we were kind of driving around afterwards, just like chatting. And I was kind of thinking that like driving around without a destination is just like if it felt a bit wrong. And so I just put the destination of the like the McDonald's drive through in the sat nav and it, it wasn't really about the destination. It was about, the okay, I've got a destination now. Now I know what the, what, what the journey is. And when we got to the McDonald's drive, it was like, what, what else? It's a McDonald's drive through. Like, the, the destination is actually not that important. But the point is, I was thinking, huh, maybe having the destination lets you kind of set the direction for your journey. And then you can always change your mind as you, as you go further down the line. And as humans, we love certainty. So even if we've created for ourselves, this is the goal that we're moving towards and we change our mind. Yeah. For the period of time that we're moving, there is certainty. One of the biggest things that hampers people's growth and you know stops them kind of getting to the place of where they probably deserve to be is that they feel that the, the journey is actually uncertain. So by kind of having that destination allows you to kind of to move towards it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. This reminds me of advice I got when I was in, in med school where like, once you once you've done your once you start your clinical years, the question everyone asks is, "Oh, what specialty do you want to do?" And the honest answer for the vast majority of people is, "I don't freaking know. I have no idea." Yeah. <laughs> like you know, there are those odd like weirdos that I've decided on the age at the age of three they want to be a neurosurgeon. Yeah. Um, but for most of us, it's like honestly, I don't know. I just want to kind of get a feel of different specialties and kind of. Um, and the advice that one of one of the consultants who I really respected gave me was that, look, honestly, just pick something and start moving towards it, because then you will start doing things that will build up your CV and you'll start actually finding opportunities your way. Yeah. And then if you want to change your mind, it's much easier to change direction when you're moving forward rather than when you're when you're stationary. And you learn about yourself as well. What do I like and what do I what do I dislike, which you won't do if you're just if you're kind of standing still. So kind of, you know, did I write about what should you do if you have no idea what you want to do in the mm. future, where, where a lot of young people are and yeah. actually people who, you know, in, who, are, who are later in life. And again, it's really about thinking, what do I kind of like doing now? So let's do some more of that and move towards a goal. And then on the way, being really reflective, am I enjoying these tasks or am I just doing it because I like the idea of becoming a surgeon or becoming a lawyer or becoming another job title? Mm. And I really want people to move away from the second. You know, I kind of think with the future of work, yeah. we have this disruption where people who are able to kind of pivot, know what their skills are, job craft, which, you which you've mentioned already, it will really stand to them. Mm. 
Yeah, so it's like you're moving away from being and more towards doing. Uh, yes. Being a doctor but versus like, what does the day-to-day of practicing medicine actually look like? And does this sound like the sort of thing that is my idea of fun right now? And I guess... I guess like it's it's kind of you know there's that thing in 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 the research about it's it's hard for us to predict what will make us happy in the future yeah but it's a reasonable first approximation that the sort of stuff i enjoy doing now like talking to people like you or like making videos is likely to also probably make me happy in the future and if it doesn't then well i can just change course yeah this is like a grid search so what what what, you know what the government should have done in covid and some governments did incredibly well was what we call this grid search strategy where they get new data They update their decision making based on the data and they're willing to go backwards or they're willing to go left and they're willing to go right and always having that openness to a change of direction. And I think if we kind of bring that into careers that, you know, really, we don't know our preferences very well. We've watched some TV when we're young. So depending on what you watch, that (laughs) might actually ultimately determine your career. Maybe you move towards that if you have no idea, but always paying attention to am I enjoying the tasks is it, do I feel purpose? If I was doing this in five years time, would I be really, really happy? Um, and you know, my director in the LSE, Manoush Safik, um, I, she, she spoke to me kind of about careers and kind of really thinking five years ahead of time, what's your next challenge going to be? Because by the time five years comes, you're not going to be able to do that challenge unless you've spent a decent amount of time doing activities that makes you credible to be that person mm. standing in that room. And really taking that approach, I think, can help people.